there we go, letting our love shine, don't you know, right here on the Hazy Radio Network, baby, rocking this network you ever found, along with the rockin'est show and the rockin'est old man, don't you know, yes indeed, you got the Coyote Medicine Show with Grandpa Coyote, Okiwan Kenobi, our assistant DJ, honored little bean that he is, man, his presence is well appreciated here today, as he is every day, man, nice to have our little animal companions to help us along the way in that coyote way especially little miniature coyote like him he's kind of cute all hot dogged out like that ain't he yeah i just sure love him i hope you love your little animals too baby or big ones or whatever you got man i hope you're like that old neighbor of mine out there in oklahoma a long time ago he had a herd of buffalo that he just kept because he liked raising them he didn't kill them he didn't eat them he just raised them because he loved them you know, I hope your animals are like that with you, too. That You're just doing it for the love of it. And the love you can get out of it, the love you can put into it, etc. But just for the love of it, you see. Too many of us have been conditioned and trained and programmed to think we always got to get something out of something, you know. And instead, it'd be a lot better if we could just be freely loving and not worry about what comes back. Because love flowing out always creates a backwash. And it's going to take care of you one way or another. It's not that life's not going to be without its difficulties. Hell, look at me. I live a magic and charm life in many ways. And I still have my difficulties and challenges to face. And sometimes they're kind of heavy duty. Like the skin cancer I got right now. Man, shit, where did that come from? Somebody attacked me or something? How did they get in? Ooh, now I know. Because I've done a whole lot of investigating. As we've been going through this shit, you know, I mean, it's been around for about a year now. I'm finally having to deal with it straight up. Got a couple of different things going on. Got cosmic surgery this weekend and then maybe physical surgery a couple weeks from then. We'll see. We'll see how it be. I think the cosmic might take care of it, don't ye? I thought so, yeah. So I sure don't want to go under the knife if I don't have to. But if I'm going to, I'm going to. And I'm going to do what I need to do in this life to keep myself rocking and rolling and to live it cosmically and to transcend this death. And if I slip over the edge by accident, babies, don't hold it again me. I'll be right back, okay? <laughs> I ain't going to stay out there and play with them guys. They're, they're, they're too easy. You guys are a lot more fun. At least you present a little bit of a challenge, you know. How loving can I be and help you transform this shit-faced reality, huh? <laughs> That's what I'm here for day after day, Monday through Friday, with a whole bunch of two knives makes your heart lodge. And a large heart to help yours even larger. That's mine, of course. Which is yours, which is Okiwan Kenobi's too. Boy, his is bigger than mine by a long shot. I don't know how he keeps it in that tiny little carcass. It's the whole universe. Wow, so's mine. Wow, so's yours. Wow. I guess everybody's is that way. It seems so divided though here today, man. It looks like Hillary's going down. Oh my goodness, golly. I think uh, WikiLeaks finally got her, man. I think the only way she's going to go down, to tell you the truth, is if they catch with her with blood on her hands. Same with Trump. Because if you think those two ain't playing the same game and in the same parlor, well, <laughs> they are. <laughs> The angels assure me they are. You know what goes on in the background here? It just makes such a farce of the foreground, you know. Because these people are so arrogant. It's, it's not their fault. I'm not blaming them. You know, they got stuck in this system. They got implanted. They got controlled. They turned into murderous witches. They couldn't help it. Part of the political scene here when the barbarians rule, right. See, but the barbarous shit is on its way out, kids. I know it don't seem like it. seems like you've got to stay streetwise. Be smart. Protect yourself. Live in fear. Oh, my royal backside, man. I think my backside is kind of royal, too, though. There's hardly any of it left. There's a little bit. <laughs> Yours is probably a lot more royal than mine is. <laughs> The royal backside of life, man, from which there is no strife. When you're sitting on it anyway, man, sit down, have a toast. Sweet Mary J, help yourself get along the way. Bring Okiwan Kenobi in today. Come on, little man, let's get this radio show on the go, little man. Don't you know? 
Now hold me on the hazy radio oh, network. Oh, that darling little boy. I'm so glad him. You know, if he wasn't here, I, I, I would need added reassurance daily, you know. But because he is here, I have that reassurance already. <laughs> and babies, I just party and play and come out to, you know, and just let it all hang out because you guys are here and you like that kind of stuff, don't you? <laughs> Well, hey, we're just kids in a play field, man. And we, in a playground, I should say, and we get to do whatever we feel. Once our heart is found, that is. You see, you got to bring out the real child now, not the one that got kicked around, not the one that had to adjust every time they turned around. Bring out the real child, the innocent love, that which knows better than everything it sees here. And can see right through it, dear, because it lives in truth. You allow yourself to soften up inside. I salute you right now for the ride. Clink, clink, clink all the way around, baby. Ooh, yeah. And let's expand, okay? <clears throat> Little token, Mary J, the sacred herb. Papa's homegrown today, man. It ain't properly cured yet, but it still smokes really sweet. Oh, my goodness, guys. We are so blessed to live in this Rocky Mountain High where it's a little more laid back than the rest of the world, man. We have our share of issues here. We have our share of insanity, just like anywhere else. And once in a while, something really violent and nasty happens. But for the most part, it's cool be alive and living in such a place. And I, I hope you feel that way about where you are. And if you don't, I hope you're following the flow that'll get you on out of there and get you to the place where you will be happy. You know, to tell you the truth, I think I could be happy just about anywhere, but I've got some contrasting experience to compare it to. And I don't know, when I'm living away from the mountains, which I've only done once in my life, but that was for a few years, I like, wow, I feel like a fish out of water, a man out of place. Stranger in a strange land. Did like old Leon Russell there, man. <laughs> Yet, I managed to chameleon myself in there and just fit right in. Next thing you know, living in Oklahoma there a while ago. Then I'm writing columns for the local paper and I'm becoming a bit of a local celebrity, you know. <laughs> it just can't be helped. And if I could have stood to live out there away from my mountains much longer, well, who knows what we might have done there. You know what I mean? We'd made a good splash just to start with, you know. And I was real laid back back then. Because I didn't, I didn't, I mean, I know it's Oklahoma. I know they, you know, they're a little backwards there. They ain't quite fooled a lot of this. Haven't quite figured a lot of this stuff out yet. Fooled a lot of this stuff out. Well, they fool themselves all the time. But they don't know it. You can't blame them for it, you know. And if you do blame them for it, well, son of a gun, I ain't going to listen to you as anybody else. <laughs> it ain't their fault. They can't help it. They don't know any better. They think that's the way things should be. Now, well, more or less Republicanated, Christianated. That's more or less what Oklahoma is, generally speaking. You know, I met a lot of liberal people there, a lot of gay people, a lot of fun people, a lot of people on the run. I mean, you know... I find real power in the heart of Oklahoma. That's why I chose to live there for a while. Because I've always, since I first visited that place many, many years ago, I've always loved the people in Oklahoma. And I grew to love the land, too, even though it's not the mountains. It's gorgeous in its own right. And these people are so mm, gifted and blessed to be able to live with all the pests they have to put up with. And nature throws a shitball at them every day, man. Chiggers, rattlesnakes, uh, what do you call them, copperhead. I mean, you know, and it's just uh, all kinds of pestilence there. Everything in Oklahoma wants to stick you, scab you, kill you, eat you. You know, I mean, it's just like, wow. And they not only put up with it, hell, they roll with it, man. They do okay. Shit, they learn to adapt and adjust and uh, don't bitch too loud when they got welts all up and down their belts from the doggone chiggers getting in there and biting down. You know, a chigger bite, I know a lot of you know about it because you got them in the east, too. Uh, we don't have them out west here, man. We got skeeters and ticks, but we don't got no chiggers, thank goodness. <laughs> 
But those folks out there, they roll with it. You know, and, and you know, a lot of them, because the oil industry is big there, a lot of them have to be roughnecks and so forth out there in the oil fields. And they just grunt down, wound socket, and go for it. You know, I mean, these are some real basic caring people for the most part. Now, there's assholes everywhere, and you're going to find them there too. But basically, Oklahomans in general set kind of the tone for the rest of America in the way that they care. And they show it. They're not afraid to show it. You know, that's when the differences go out the window. And Oklahoma deals with disasters all the time because there's so many things there out to get you, you know. And after a hurricane, or I mean, not a hurricane, after a big old tornadoes come in, wiped out a community, everybody gets together, cooperates, and puts it back together again, you know, kind of defiant of the weather, eh? Yeah, we'd be better off if everybody in Oklahoma lived in teepees. In fact, the whole Midwest, then you could avoid the, the worst disasters and stuff, and you just move around according to conditions. You don't have to put up with crap like I'm talking about, because you're not there all the time. You're nomadic. You move with the weather. You move with the herd to the buffalo, whatever, you know what I mean? See, but we kind of lost sight of that and got into a different state of being, but there you are. And I think Oklahoma will still be the center of the blossoming heart here in the USA. Some really sweet things are happening over that way, and I think some real people are coming out to play, and I think we're going to see some serious reformation, maybe even today, over their Oklahoma way. What do you say? Should we send some love that way and see if we can help them play that way? Okay, I'll do it. Let's do it. All of us. Not just me, Oki, all the crew, everybody. Okay, here's what we do. We just, hmm, I'm across the age now. You can't be too relaxed about this. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course. Just put your feet on the floor, open them hands, open that heart. Give them a good start there in Oklahoma. I think it's about time they legalized marijuana there. Got Mary Jane to be their happy little helper, you know. Because, you know, a lot of people smoke it anyway. They might as well be legal about it instead of having to go to prison for 20 years for trying to search your soul and get some harmony going on in life. That's kind of sad, isn't it? Yeah that that would be allowed to happen. So let's help Oklahomans get over the sadness, the meanness, the killer instinct, the military influence, everything else there that's putting the people down and not bringing them around. And help them to know they're some of the finest hearts ever to be found anywhere. And from this place in the Rocky Mountain High and this heart inside our soft, sweet little hide, we bless them with the smoothest, happiest, most carefree ride there could ever be. Because you sure put up with a lot to get to where you be now, right? Right. So here you go, babies. A nice, smooth flow going out to Oklahoma where we're going to open the heart of America because that is the heartland. And we're going to push it open from there all across this vast turtle eye land. And we're going to do away with countries and governments and police and law enforcement and military. It's all, now it's not going down, it's dissolving away. And people will never play again in that way. Because the illusion is finally at its death point. So guys, I just want you to hang on. Love yourself. Hold your heart. Give yourself all the time you need to get through this flow that's taken us to such dynamic places, don't you know? Especially there in Oklahoma. we got to help them out, man. Because they're helping us out. See how we work together in this despite our seeming differences, objections, competition, etc.? See, the cooperative nature of the human heart is well established in every person that lives here. But we're just not permitted to live it until we give ourselves that permission. Once you do, you'll know what I'm talking about and you'll bring it about. And babies... Everybody's going to come out and play. It's going to be one happy little day today, okay? Bless you, Okies, babies. We understand your way. Oh, and you Texans, too. They, they hate being left out. Texans do. They know Oklahoma's superior, but, you know, they just can't accept it, you know. So we uh, got to give a, a nice embrace to them Texans, too. It's, well, except for the oil people. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I'm Josh around. Everybody gets a hug this time. Because we're the spiritual clown and we know that your heart has already been found. 
And we're just here helping you bring it around so you can live in a way that will astound each and every person that you've ever played with, let alone any that you ever stayed with, let alone any little avenue of life you might have played with, gone down this avenue a bit too far, didn't you? Yeah, but you got back, you're okay. Now, babies, let this dream out. You know it's paradise. You know it can be paradise if you allow it to be. And when we say paradise, what we talk about? Just a peaceful, happy place where everybody gets along. Not just the human beings. I mean everybody, everything is just happy and carefree. zippity doo dah and all that good shit. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? You catching on? We're not in Kansas anymore like Dorothy and Toto. And we're not over the rainbow either. We are the rainbow of creation coming forward in life. And babies, everybody else better just watch the heck out because we're here and we're blossoming. And it's beautiful. And I love you for it. Get your bodies on over to thecoyoteclub.com. Check out our action there. Get into the big old raffle drawing we're having, man. Come take a free trip with Grandpa. Next year, we're going to draw it out on 420, so you got a little time. But just remember, the more ticks you get, the better the odds are. Maybe it'll be you. I'm going to draw for two to go with us. And then I'm going to draw for 130 or something like that, more prizes to go with it. So if you interrupt, babies, you're going to get entered into something really sweet. Somehow or another, might be a set of Coyote Club coffee mug. It might be a papal dispensation that allows you satirically to enjoy your herbal nature anywhere and anytime you want to. Show this to the officer next time you get pulled over and he sees a little little bit of green or a little roach in your ashtray or something. Show him that. Maybe we'll get him laughing and you'll get away with it, see? Because everybody knows by now that it should never have been made illegal you know, I'm healing this cancer with it. Taking some of those Phoenix tears. I'm working on it. And it's, you know, part of it's getting there quicker than others. But, you know, and I may still have to go have surgery yet. But, you know, at least it's there. It's legal. And it's available to those. I mean, think about the people who have those internal cancers. That's difficult. That's hard to deal with. It can be really painful. And Mary Jane can wipe that shit out. 90-day program, man. Take these drops, gram, gram and a half a day. And you're over with it. See? That's just one of the gifts of Mary Day. She's good for fibromyalgia. She's good for uh, uh, epileptic seizures. I mean, all kinds of places in this life where she's of great benefit. But the same way we turned our back on the Mother Earth for the sake of what? The almighty dollar? How stupid can that be? And the power that goes with it. Oh, jeez. What an illusion. So truth is we never have turned our back on our mother. And we never let money mislead us this way. And we never got cruel with each other. And there isn't any pain. There is only the paradise. Because that's where we remain. As you're beginning to find out, it feels like you're starting to withdraw from life, but no, you're getting involved with life so that you can see it and go home. Home. Yeah, that place of peace, contentment, happiness, where your vibrational family awaits you to sing in harmony together those grand voices, angelic voices raised in that presence of praise once again. I mean, how much better can it be than living in our true reality. You just got to realize that no matter how far you've gone, you're innocent. You're alive in this creation. You're alive in your mother earth and the mother love behind her, which I represent with Mary J. You see the divine feminine, the urge to create is in everything and everyone. And we are that creation. Working with the creator in the heart, which is the creation and the creator. Each one of us, by our perspective, lives in that divine way. And the universe bends over backwards to accommodate us when we let it, when we allow it. See, so you just got to take it a little easier on yourself, that's all. 
Just go with the flow when you know. Give yourself the time today to get all the rest of this shit out of the way. Because today's the day we come out and play on a Wowser Wednesday. In that coyote way. On the Coyote Medicine Show and in this earth, don't you know. Watch out world, we're whirling around in the heart. We're starting to catch on. You guys in a whole heap of trouble now. It's over, baby. It's over. At least that part of it is anyway. And here we are finding life, finding what love really is and finding out that it's nothing to be afraid of. It's not weak and it's not going to let you ever get your heart broke, etc. Those are the lies and illusions by which we've lived and which we've disproven with our own experience here. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> More to go on this rock and roll medicine show we call life. More on this Coyote Medicine Show on Hazy Radio Network. Don't you know, oh babies, we love you so. Oh, heavens to Betsy. We ain't never going back to that old school. Now is we, fool? We had enough of that deal. Ooh, it was so unreal. Babies, now what we feel is to make it real. So here's a shout out to the real tribes, the real indigenous Americans hanging out up there in North Dakota in protest of a pipeline. Well, yeah. That's one of the worst things could happen. Big disaster for that country up there, which is so ecologically fragile. But it's about making a stand against those who would destroy this land and this earth right along with her, man. And you got to take your hats off to them because they have certainly done an excellent job of trying to destroy this earth completely and all the people on it, including themselves. Fukushima, anyone? How about, you know, the Gulf of Mexico, that big old oil spill, etc., etc., etc. You know, the callous nature of these human beings is just, you know, it, it boggles my mind to see it, to see how hard and unreal we can be in the way that we feel about money, but not for mother. You see, it's a backwards world. We got it upside down, and some folks, man, they are so possessed through the energies of digression, barbarism, if you will, that they can't help themselves. Dick Cheney, anybody? I mean, you know, how about George Soros? I mean, these people are without a soul, kind of, you know, because it's been pretty much diagrammed and compressed and put away through the use of uh, indoctrinating programming implants, and so forth, given into these persons. Now, I haven't gone and watched it in a while, but I'll bet if you go and watch the first inaugural speech of any of our presidents, especially the most recent one, the first one now, not the second one, but the first one where they just uh, uh, are first stepping into the office, you're going to see some people there that you didn't see before. When you were looking at the same thing, if you watch such stuff, a lot of people don't bother with it because it's such a joke. But you will see beings there that are exercising power over that person that's becoming <coughs> president. My backside. You see, the whole political reality that we see here coming out of D.C. and other centers of power is a dog and pony show designed to keep us wrapped up in intrigue and voting this way and voting that way and not voting at all till we got this national shame of an election now. I think both sides bought the election and rigged it crazily. I think both sides did. Either one of them are not qualified to hold office, in my humble opinion, either one of them. See how failed our whole project has been here in the U.S. of A because we let the Nazis come over. We lost World War II. We surrendered, not to Germany, but to the Nazis. And we brought them here, and Russia took some, and we got all these secret space programs going on, etc., see? Completely out of hand for the pursuit of a few dollars. I mean, these people are so bad. They give money to, like, help the homeless recovery. Well, just like George Carlin said earlier today, give us a couple million bucks out of that, and okay, we'll help them out. <laughs> What was it? The National Recovery Act. They did exactly that. They dealt themselves in for I don't know how many millions each, but they did. 
And they did it crookedly, but you know, that's the way the world's been operating. Because money meant more than anything. Meant more than our mother. Meant more than life itself. We kill people over money all the time. Where do you think the mafia got all its power? Killing people over money. And stupid issues revolving around it. And money's a false god. I mean, you know, our normal human... Now listen, just, just, just see us. Oh, as little baby children, yet full-grown presences. So we got adult-type persons, but we're like little baby children, standing out in a field in the bright sunlight, looking at each other, got a look of delight in our eyes, a lot of mischievousness going on there. And we're looking at each other saying, what do we do now? What's next? We got it. We're over with it. We're done with it. We're through with it. The 3D, I mean. And all the cruelty to go with it. That almighty dollar is falling. And it's doing more than falling. The whole concept of trade, economy, work, is it's nothing but cheap-ass slavery and we're not doing it anymore. Now, we may use a transitional vehicle of money, but it's not going to be like the old dollar, you know, and it's not going to be ruled over by, by a bunch of assholes that think they're bankers. You know, I mean, shit. Go take your score somewhere else. Talk about controlled persons. You ever dealt with a banker? I have cousins that were bankers, and they were small town bankers, and I knew them when I was a kid. They weren't nothing like these assholes on Wall Street. They were human. You know, they were there to fund the community, and they knew it, and that's what they did. Now, perhaps they had their own ideas and opinions of how it would be, but a person's reputation meant more than credit ratings ever did. Didn't even know what that was. Credit rating, shit. You know, now it's become so depersonalized, so cold and heartless, that if you need to borrow a few bucks, go buy a car or something, you got to go through all kinds of hoops and you got to have good credit and all that stuff. And it's just a bunch of crap. It's slavery. Those payments, those monthly payments, whatever they are, it is slavery. It ensures that you will be producing in the workaday world for the rest of forever until you croak. And the state takes it all back and might give it to your friends and relatives. And then again, they might just keep it. <laughs> Name of the game, man. The gold watch is worthless. Nobody's getting them anymore anyway because they're even getting so cheap now, these rich guys on I me. Mean, they don't want to give anybody a career. They want them all to be part-time employees with no health insurance, etc., you know. They want the government to pay for it all. And they want us to tax ourselves shitless to pay for it. And not them. <laughs> See how insane, <clears throat> I mean, on one level, that kind of makes sense, you know, from an economic standpoint, if you're a rich person standing there looking at it, shit, yeah, it makes perfect sense, doesn't it? When all that matters is money and ego and power, because you're building your whole empire on an empty fucking heart. You ain't got one anymore. You gave it up. And you didn't even know you were doing it because you gave it up before you came to this life and agreed to be enslaved in this way in this life. Now, I'm not talking all of you, but yeah, all of us have been enslaved one way or another. We've all compromised our lives away, so I guess I am talking to all of you. I was thinking more of the politicos who compromise their ass, you know, to get a little gain. Well, and, and they're just visible. You know, because they're public activity, so they're visible. But, you know, you've got movie stars do the same thing, rock stars do the same thing, etc. Most people sell themselves short here. They have to. I'd say 99 and 9 tenths percent of us have one way or another. But, you know, after a while, we start to come around finally. Through all these generations of time, we've been building in this direction. The direction of a full and complete heart in motion once again. The dreamers awakening from the nightmarish dream they've been living in and realizing the blessing of the star child inside of themselves. For that's the innocent love that I speak of. It is a star. And you are an angel that inhabits that star presence as that star presence inhabits your angelic self. One of the spiritual mechanics of the universe knows love intimately, backwards and forward, knows creation as if it is itself, and therefore can create and affect any anomalies that may have appeared in the art of our creation. So in other words, 
We can take on the shit and get it over with, and that's what we proved here in this Earth reality. Don't expect World War III then. Expect eternal peace, and not from dying, but from living. Living larger than you ever have. Living in everything that surrounds you as well as everything inside of you, which is the same thing in a personal way. God, it's so beautiful to be alive and loving with you today. I just can't thank you enough. Fellow human beings, it's all you got to be. I don't care what else you are. Fellow human beings, that's all we are, really. All of us. You see, I know about what happens to some of those people because I've been through a lot of it myself. You can read about some of it in this book I've written called The Atomic Bum, B-U-M, like your backside, by Coyote Bear, which is my pseudonym. <laughs> so don't sue me, sue Coyote Bear, whoever that is. <laughs> now nah, you got to check it out because it kind of shows you how things have developed in humanity, the real levels they're played at, and how they've been developed into this day, this day and age, where everything is subject to quick and powerful change. Because finally, as a creation, we've decided the polarities don't serve us anymore. The illusionary worlds have completed themselves in all cycles and seasons that were possible. Well, I mean, there's always unlimited possibilities, but we've gone as far with it as we needed to go. See, in the long ago, the you know, history of the humanity is very little known here. But in the long ago, before we became human beings, there was these dinosauric presences that tried to make a go of it here. And we call them dinosauric because that's how you represent them now when you find their bones and stuff. But they're really just rep a reptilian energy, an energy that was built a little more coldly than the rest of the reality around it and had to vampirically take the light from others in order to feel warmth. Whether it was the sun or the earth or whatever, that's what its function was. And it was an anomaly that we'd created. I mean, emptiness does not exist. Fullness is the ever-present life. But these beings, because they were in the, in the uh, origins of this creation that we call the universe now, they felt themselves strong enough to be able to endure such hardship. So they volunteered into the same kind of service we've been doing as a human being here for millions of years now, maybe a billion. And they f screwed up royally, I almost said it. They screwed up royally, couldn't find their way out of it. So we had to take them down, do it all over again. And that's when the big confab in a cosmic way came about. All of creation sent representations there, which of course... They're completely connected to. So this is an act of the universal heart. Talking to itself and amongst itself and saying, what can we do to resolve this situation? And the innocent eyes of the mother love and a tiny child comes up and says, okay, we'll become human beings. Little freshly pleasances. <laughs> there I go, boy, I stumbled on that one. Little fleshly presences that are meant to feel and to root down that feeling in the Mother Earth's heart as we lived in the same dynamic that the reptilians could never handle and took on their energy to boot and allowed a certain amount of control at one point in the reality so that we could go down the same as these beings had and forget who we are, where we come from, what we're all about and live in this illusion as a restricted and powerless little baby child, a human being. Which is the ultimate power in the universe. A human being. Yeah. Each one of us. The power of the whole universe inside of us. Each one of us and a ruler of the universe that by which it's measured into being. The recipe, the formula that creates. And the love that activates the light to form us as human beings. And everything else around us too. So if you give yourself some time, slow down a little bit. Don't let this fast, sleazy political reality take you away from yourself. Even if you're sold out completely. 
You don't have to be that way today now, do you? What was yesterday is yesterday. It's gone. It lives in an elemental way, and you'll learn a lot from it as you go along here, but it doesn't have to restrict you now. I don't care if you are Dick Cheney. Step out of it. Come forward and find a heart and quit stealing them from everybody else thinking you don't have one. Because babies, the most heartless beings on this earth are empowered through the vision of the heart. The universal heart, the collective heart of all. Which is especially focused and framed in the human experience as an extension of the mother's love in personal forms. Which is one personal form, which is creation. Now, <laughs> it goes around and around. But it always came, comes up with the same thing, being found, see. But it's okay. We've been backwards. We've been down. We've been pushed around. We've been shoved around. We've been enslaved like a knave and then some man and kicked in the ass to boot, you know, by our own self, our own persons, our own fellow human beings that don't seem to give a shit about anything or anyone except for M-O-N-E-Y, which ain't nothing. That's an illusion, too. Again, see us standing out in that field. Baby children in full adult bodies, man. Starting to understand what we already know. What do we do now? I tell you. We put our hands together, we gather in a circle, and we begin this creation in a really happy sort of way. And we don't go backwards with it anymore. That's how we even the score. We allow ourselves to see that so that we can be that, so that we are that, which is our truth. <laughs> Coyote medicine through and through. But baby, it's doing it for you. With you. Cooperatively, see? Competition is the illusion. Cooperation is the nature. The true nature of life. Not just human life. Life. And it's more than cooperation. Because we are the same life and motion, then this life acts just like it does inside of a bodily person. It works in perfect and complete harmony without even having to think about it. Every little cell and atom performs its function perfectly or as close to it as it can get. And we're happy. And we're free. And we're living in everything that we see. It's made out of the same stuff we are. The light. The love, the mother love, deep as the ocean, high as the sky, is expansive of infinity. There is no beginning, no end. Just all these places where we begin again. Then all the experience in that. And then we step out of time and experience the full presence of all of it in a singular moment which lasts forever. And here you thought you had it all figured out. And you weren't even close. But it doesn't matter. The mind can never understand what the heart holds in its plan unless it sees that it is inclined to be an extension of that heart and not a boss. Freedom lives in all of us, baby. Despite the heavy and poetic irony in his life and the perfect sardonetry within that irony. If you understand my meaning, Gene, oh, you little jelly bean, yeah, see, don't go playing them games today now. I'm telling you, if he or she wants to fight, don't sucker for it, man. You know, take a look at this thought inside, held subconsciously mainly, or a feeling, if you will, because that's where the subconscious is, is in the feeling. And see, if you don't, if you haven't in the past sincerely believed that anger was a part of your strength, and that's what kept other people at bay, those that would take advantage of you and sweep you away and blow you away, etc. You know what I mean? Those that would eat your life for the sake of a few dollars. They don't think no more about you than they do poking a hole in Mother Earth, blowing her up, burning her up, atomicizing her. I mean, you know, they can't even think, these people. That's how far gone they are from themselves. And a lot of human beings the same way, just normal folks live in the life of slavery. That was a good escape. It's the only way a lot of people could even tolerate it as a spiritual presence to live lives like this. You know, you got to realize what a step down this is. It's huge, you know. 
That's why we develop birth and death to give us a mechanism by which we could do it, you know, without having to sit there and, and try and believe something that wasn't real. <laughs> We're clever little de devils, us angels, we, aren't we, man? And all this was designed in that grand convent held so long ago that it's gone from the memory of most, don't you know, yet inside of you is the memory of it too. And everyone else in this reality ain't gone anywhere. We just distance ourselves through it through time. But as we come out of time and seasons, then we see what we've really been up to. We see the energies of play here. And God, it makes such perfect sense. Okay? You ready for a perception like that? Because you have got to develop it yourself. See, that's the beautiful thing of being a person. You do have kind of a duty to your heart to let it hold sway in your life and to embrace it and enhance it and accept it as the full, ever-present life that you're living. Even though you've never known that before, you've had a feeling that that was the way it was. But now you live it. It's better than believing or knowing or following anybody's dogmatic flow which don't go anywhere, except round in big circles and keep you enslaved, eh? We take you in circles that are ever increasing in expansion and in the levels of joy that can be experienced here. That's the coyote way. And the coyote blessing on this Wowser Wednesday here on the Hazy Radio Network with Grandpa Coyote, a whole raft of angelic friends, our spaceship crew which knows what to do, Okiwan Kenobi coming through as our assistant DJ, and all the rest of you out there in that happy little world, whirling around when the coyote way, when Grandpa's here to play early in the day, only on that radio network called Hazy. You want to get a clear deer, tune in here. I tell you the truth, you can tune in in your heart. And I, being, you know, Grandpa Coyote, as a presence, will always be there. The same as you're always a presence over here in this happy little heart of mine. Beautifully so, I might add. I think 